Hey, I'm Liz, and I'll be testing this six-person Ozark Trail instant tent for its ease of use, space, rain protection, dark rest feature, other features, and loads more. First up, there's no unboxing for this video because this is a pretty old tent, but here's roughly what it'll look like even when it's brand new, and now I'm going to take everything out and show you what you should get out of the box. Okay, so this is the tent body with all the pre-attached poles, here's the rainfly, a pocket organizer, a gear loft, a small carry bag that has nine stakes inside, and here's the bigger overall carry bag to fit everything in. For the ease of setup, here's a quick time lapse and also some pros and cons that I found while setting this tent up. For pros, I really liked that I could set up the entire tent on my own. You'll see that I can do so from this time lapse here, and I'm not even very tall, I'm only about 5'3. I also liked the easy setup of this tent. It was really quick, and the entire setup took me just six and a half minutes. This includes staking and guying out the tent. Without staking and guying, it takes about five minutes instead. Why exactly does it set up so quickly? Well, that's because almost everything on this tent was pre-attached. We have these pre-attached poles, all the pole clips on this tent are also pre-attached, and the four guy lines all come pre-attached as well. If you need more info on this setup, I put together this step-by-step -step guide, which you can find on my channel if you need it. As for the setup cons, there were a couple of things I didn't quite like. The bigger issue is that the rainfly has these short cord loops. There are four of them, one in each corner, and these are to be attached onto the four fabric loops on the tent body. These are really tight, there's a lot of strain and tension on the shock cord, and eventually you're going to need to replace the shock cord. In fact, it's so tight that if you stake down the tent before putting the rainfly up, you're not going to be able to get the rainfly secured to the body. I had a lot of trouble with that at the beginning. Another small con is that the instructions aren't great. You're sewn onto the carry bag, so you won't ever lose them, but they're not detailed at all, so if it's your first time setting up an instant tent, it's better to watch this video on it. As for the pack away process, I go through exactly how I pack away this tent in this separate video as well, so I'm not going to go through that here, but what I'm going to say is that it took me about six and a half minutes as well to take the tent down and pack it away back into the carry bag. It would have been a little quicker if one, compression straps were provided to help get the tent down into a smaller size. These straps provided were just regular tie downs that were so not user friendly at all, and two, if the carry bag provided it could have been a little bit bigger. Moving on to the rain test, I put this Ozark Trail tent through only a very light rain test. It barely even comes up on the video and you basically have to strain your eyes to see the rain here. But I think you can see it a little better in these next few shots which are a little more close up. After just 15 minutes of this very light rain, I noticed that some of the rain had actually seeped into the fabric of the tent from the outside here. So I went into the tent to give it a check, and while the fabric around the tent was not damp yet from the inside, so still dry, but I noticed that this untaped flooring seam here got damp. I checked the entire seam around the tent and found that it was damp throughout, which is pretty bad. I'm not sure if it shows up on the video as well, but my fingers were damp after touching it. Here's what the seam looks like from the outside of the tent and weirdly enough, this is the only seam exposed to the outside that wasn't taped. To me, that's a really strange choice. I also tested another of my Ozark Trail tents through 15 minutes of slightly heavier rain and some moderate rainfall and that was the limit for that tent. After that rain test, there was leaking through the exact same seam, which again was not taped but inverted instead, and also some water was already seeping through this blue fabric of the tent. It was pretty much soaked and was so not good. As for ventilation on rainy days, notice how the rainfly of this tent is so tiny and barely even covers any of the windows of this tent. After the 15 minutes of light rain, I checked both the front door window and one of the side windows of this tent and found that the mesh, especially at the bottom of each window, was actually already kind of damp, and that's just from light rain. So no window ventilation. 
Luckily, there is a ground vent at the back of the tent, which measures almost a foot in width from the outside. From the inside, it's covered by a layer of mesh, so you can't access it from the inside. And the dimensions on this side are about 7 by 29 inches. It's honestly not very big, but I guess some ventilation is better than no ventilation. Moving on to the dark res feature of this tent, I'm going to talk about four different tests. The first being whether the dark res fabric actually keeps you cool on hot summer days. To test this, I had this tent out for at least 24 hours and then I picked one of the hottest times in the afternoon to take the temperature of the surroundings and here's what I found. The outside of the tent temperature at this moment was about 30.8 degrees Celsius or about 87.4 degrees Fahrenheit. On the inside of the tent, the temperature was about 37.9 degrees Celsius or about 100.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Now you may think that this means the dark rest feature makes it hotter inside the tent. Not necessarily, sir. I did this exact same test in another tent that didn't have the blackout fabric. This is my Gazelle T4, and the outside temperature on that day was about 30.2 degrees Celsius or 86.4 degrees Fahrenheit. On the inside of the tent, the temperature was also 37.9 degrees Celsius or 100.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Notice that on the day that I tested the Ozark Trail, the outside temperature was slightly hotter by about 0.6 degrees Celsius or exactly 1 degree Fahrenheit, yet both the temperatures inside the tent were exactly the same. Conclusion, the dark rest feature does keep you very slightly cooler inside the tent on hot days. Emphasis on the very slightly. The dark rest feature also blocks light from getting out and it does so pretty well. Here's what the Ozark Trail looks like without any lighting. And here's what it looks like when there's a lighted lantern in the tent. Notice how the walls of the tent don't have that much light seeping out and only the skylight window at the top allows light to get out. That's pretty cool and you won't be able to see any shadows unlike regular tents. As for my third dark rest test, I'm also going to check out how much sunlight it can block out. Okay, this first shot is of me lying inside the tent with all the windows and doors open, so you can check out what it looks like. Now I'm going to get into the tent, shut all the windows and also the door, so you can see the difference in the amount of light getting into the tent. Again, here's what it looks like with the door and windows open, and I'm going to cut to this shot of the door and windows closed. To me, I think there's quite a lot of light being cut down inside the tent, and the difference is quite noticeable. And this isn't even a brand new tent. My friend kept this in storage for one and a half years before selling it to me for this review, and I think you might have noticed that the fabric is fading, and that's gonna be my fourth test for this feature. So yeah, there are like streaks of light getting in through the fabric all around the entire tent, and I'll show you some close-up shots of the tent fabric as well. Also, here's a shot on how dark it should be when it's much newer and hasn't been exposed to too much sun yet. And this is what it looks like after some of the fabric has faded. So it's definitely not as dark as it used to be, and I found that the back wall was especially bad. It's still darker than a normal tent though, that's for sure. However, one annoying thing I noticed is that the degrading of the blackout fabric started leaving this sticky residue on my fingers every time I touched the wall of the tent, which is really gross. I actually wanted to use and test this tent out for longer, but I decided to junk it after a few days because it was really gross. Moving on to the base dimensions of this tent, I measured the length to be about 117 and a half inches, while the width came in at about 104 inches. This gave me a base area of slightly less than 85 square feet, and it was sadly quite a few inches smaller than the marketed dimensions of 10 by 9 feet. On top of the base area, I also wanted to look at how many single pads I could fit into this six-person Ozark Trail tent. Here's me inflating some of my sleeping pads, here's a couple of double pads and also a single sleeping bag. I'll put the dimensions of my pads on the screen here. I think the pads fit just nicely into the tent. There's not a whole lot of wiggle room in between each pad, and there's some space down here to fit another pad, so I guess technically it does fit six people, if you don't mind sleeping like sardines in this tent. 
As for the queen bed sizing, here are two of my almost queen bed mattresses, and let's see how they fit into the tin. Okay, now that they're both inflated, I'm going to put the dimensions of both these mattresses on the screen, and as you can tell, they're all together about 5 inches shy of true queen sizes. I moved both these mattresses to the sides of this tent as much as I could, and the excess space was just this small gap here, which is definitely not 5 inches. So if you have two actual queen beds of 80 by 60 inches, it won't be able to fit into the tent for sure. That's because the length of this tent is a little too short for two actual queens. And with these two mattresses in this tent, I also had a little leftover space for gear at the foot of each mattress. The peak height at the center of this Ozark Trail tent is just 65 and a half inches, which is right about the marketed peak height of 66 inches. However, even though I'm not very tall, when I'm standing in the center of this tent, my head is almost touching the top of the tent. So if you're taller than me, you literally won't be able to stand up in this tent. And for all cabin tents, I usually like to look also at the lowest height of the tent. And for this Ozark Trail tent, that came in at about 53 inches. And to be honest, I was just measuring the height up to the top corner seam, which is what I do with all my other cabin tents. And look at how far my measuring tape is from the actual corner of the tent. It's kind of not really even in the corner of the tent anymore. And that's because of the really not so vertical sidewalls of this tent. I'll try to explain this to you. Okay, so here are a couple of my other cabin tents, and one of the key features of these cabin tents are these almost vertical sidewalls. The blue line is a vertical line upwards, the red line shows the slight slant of the walls. Now let's move to this Ozark Trail tent, and just with these same two blue and red lines, I think you can see it's really not as vertical as it should be. I'll talk a little more about this later and show you more of my experiments, but for now, let's move on to the windows. There are three windows in this tent, and of course I'll try to put as many real-time clips as I can of me unzipping the windows on the screen so you can check them out. There's one window each on three of the walls of the tent. There's no window on this last wall, and I'll explain why later. The windows aren't very big, and here are the dimensions. Each of the regular windows on these sides come in at about 25 by 21 inches, while the door window at the front has dimensions of 33 by 28 inches, so slightly bigger. Each of these windows don't unzip all Way, so when the windows open, there is a little pocket at the bottom of each window to tuck the window fabric in. I usually always like these little pockets at the bottom because it's really easy to tuck the fabric in and also untuck the fabric altogether and then just grab the zipper and zip all the windows shut without a hitch. Actually, I didn't even have to untuck the fabric to zip the windows up, but I wouldn't really recommend stressing the zippers like that. And that's because the zippers of this tent are kind of small, they feel a little bit flimsy, although they're supposed to be SBS, as you can see on the side of each zipper here. I don't know why they feel so cheap though, but at least they got the job done without any snagging. Oh, one thing to note here is that the top part of these regular windows don't have zips, so this tent is definitely not meant for anything other than summer. As for the quality of the mesh, here's a close-up of what it looks like, it's just regular mosquito netting. One unique thing about this tent is the skylight here, so basically there are two more windows up top, and I don't think I've ever seen that in any other tent so far. And that's because this Ozark Trail tent has these two plastic skylight panels on the rainfly, so when you open the top windows, you get to look at the sky or stargaze at night. The skylight windows aren't too big though, each of them is in this triangle shape, with a longest length of 39 inches and a longest width of 19 inches. Not exactly unblocked views of the sky, but better than nothing I suppose. Here's a couple of other features for this skylight. The zippers are the same as the side windows, which are these SBS zippers. There's also a toggle at the bottom of each window to keep the fabric rolled up neatly, and the mesh is just regular mosquito netting. The toggle was really user friendly, and the zipping experience was really snag free as well, as you can tell from these real time clips here. The other two panels at the top are just full mesh and can't be zipped up, and I'll show you more of them in a later test. 
there's just a single door at the front of the tent here and to be honest i didn't really like it very much for a few reasons first it's not very big it has a length and width of just 46 by 36 inches which is only about two times my size but that's probably the least of your problems second it measures just 46 inches from the ground to the top of the door so you're gonna have to do a whole lot of ducking to get in and out of this tent through this door i'm not very tall myself but even i did feel that i had to duck pretty low and third, although it's the same SBS zippers as the windows, the zipping experience for the door isn't as great. From the inside of the tent, because the wall of the tent is so dang floppy, I couldn't even unzip the zipper with one hand, and I had to use my other hand to hold the zipper before I could do so. And there are also two separate zipper tracks to this door, so again, you gotta bend or crouch a lot just to get the door zipped up or unzipped. This is just a neutral point, there are two toggles by the side of the door to hold it open. And on the outside of the tent, the rain flap from the outside will always get caught in the zipper track every time you're trying to zip it up, which can be really annoying. Moving on to storage, let's first start with the pockets, and you should get this removable pocket organizer right here. It's supposed to be hung up here on the back wall, I'll do so right now and show it to you. This is the reason why the back wall doesn't have a window, if that's something you were wondering from the previous window test which I also promised to explain. So, now you know. There are 6 individual pockets in this organizer, 3 of them together measure about 42 inches, so about 14 inches per pocket in length and 6 inches in width. The four corners of the organizer have an S-hook in each corner, and each of these are to be attached to the fabric loops on the back wall of the tent. Still on storage, there's one lantern loop right at the very top center of this tent. I'll hang a small lantern here for you to check out. And there are actually another four more loops around the lantern loop, and I'll point them out to you here. That's for the provided gear loft, which looks like this. And it has an S-hook at each corner as well for hanging up on the top loops. The gear loft is really quite small, it measures only about 11 by 11 inches, and I'll put it up right now. As you can tell, it's really quite small compared to the size of this tent. But one thing I did like is that I could still hang a small lantern up on the lantern loop even with the gear loft in place. There's also electrical cord access on this tent at the middle of the tent here. Going inside, you can seal it shut completely or open it with this velcro seal. It's quite tight and shouldn't let in any bugs. Moving on to the materials of this tent, the flooring definitely looks like polyethylene, while the rest of the tent fabric is made of polyester and the poles are made of alloy steel. That's basically all the info that I got on the materials, polyester and alloy steel. Oh, and the poles are also starting to show signs of rust, which is not good. For the zipper and mesh materials, do check out these tests on the screen here. And here's what the stakes look like, here's what the pole clips look like, here's what the stuff sack fabric looks like, and here's what one of the guy lines looks like. That's the tensioner there, but sadly they don't seem to be reflective at night. The stitching on this tent isn't the best, there were quite a few areas of patchwork like this all around the entire tent, so unfortunately that's another con against this tent when it comes to quality. Now moving on to the ceiling mesh, I'm gonna take the rainfly off first so I can show you what the mesh panels look like. I think this is great for stargazing at night or to look at during the day as well, and it's also useful for more ventilation on hot summer days. With the windows and door open, I guess you get quite a decent amount of ventilation overall. And here's what the ceiling mesh panels look like from the outside as well. Now that the brain flies off, I also want to show you the instant mechanism of this tent. There's only a single hub at the very top of the tent, and I'll try to get some close-up shots of this hub so that you can see it. There are also four poles connected to this hub, with pole clips holding the tent body to the poles, and in the middle of each pole, there's also an elbow joint, and the rest of the pole makes up the wall of the tent. These joints have the tendency to buckle pretty easily in strong wind, so I'd keep this tent away from that. To be honest, because of the instant mechanism, I felt that this entire tent was really quite floppy. If you take a look at this shot of me just trying to move the tent with minimal strength, you can see how floppy it already is. And that's with the entire tent stick down and guide out. Even with just late wind, the entire tent wall tends to flop around in the wind as well. 
For portability, I measured the pack size of this six person Ozark Curl Instant Tent to be about 44 by 11 by nine and a half inches. Here's what it looks like beside a six person Eureka cabin tent, a two person Coleman Sender tent, and also a 32 ounce Nelsheed bottle. Notice how it's a lot longer than a six person regular tent without the instant mechanism. The carry bag comes with a hand strap at the top here. It's a bit too small for even me to use it as a shoulder strap, and this entire tent weighed about 17.8 pounds for everything. For pros, I think the main reason loads of campers buy Ozark Trail is for the price of the tent, and I think this one goes for anywhere between 100 to 150 bucks. That's a decent price for a six person tent. Not the cheapest, but decent. Another huge pro is the easy setup of this tent, which came in at about six and a half minutes for me. That's easily between 40 to 70% less time than it takes me to set up a regular six person cabin tent. And I'll put some timings on the screen here so that you can have a rough idea of the different setup timings. I think the dark rest fabric is also pretty useful when it comes to blocking out sunlight in the day and also blocking out shadows at night. And you can check out all these tests that I did on the dark rest feature because I'm not gonna go through them in detail here. I also really like that the center hub of this tent is of decent quality and the entire tent can be folded up and laid flat on the ground for easy cleaning. Not a lot of instant tents are able to do that. And I think these skylight windows are a somewhat unique feature to have. It's useful for stargazing without even taking the rainfly off and you can also look out even when it's raining. But here's where we move into the cons unfortunately. To be very honest, I can't say that I'm a big fan of the plastic skylight panels. This tent is just a couple of years old and it's already starting to turn yellow a little bit and it's not quite as clear as it once was. I suspect it's only a matter of time before it completely falls apart like one of my other budget tents that also had plastic windows. But that's just what I think. Let me know down in the comments if your skylight panels are still going strong. I'd love to hear about it. And one of the biggest cons that really annoyed me was the lack of livable space inside the tent. And as I promised you earlier in the video, here's a few more follow-up experiments that I did in this test. First, in all my other six-person tents, I could actually fit pretty thick nine-inch mattresses into the tent and still stand under the peak height no problem at all. However, for this six-person Ozark Trail, my head was almost touching the top without a mattress, and with these same 9-inch mattress, I had to bend my knees a little. And that's because the peak height is shockingly low for a six-person tent. Second, in most of my other cabin tents, when I sleep at the sides of the tent, it really doesn't feel too claustrophobic. I'm able to raise my arm up without touching the walls, and I can sit up without hitting the tent fabric too. But in this tent, whether I'm on a single pad or on one of my queen beds, look at how tight the fit is. The tent fabric is hanging right above me. My arm definitely hits the tent fabric when I raise it up, and so does my head when I try to get up. And that's because the side walls of this tent aren't as vertical as they should be. And third, with most other cabin tents, I'm usually able to walk around the entire tent very, very nicely. Basically, there's loads of livable space inside the tent. However, for this Ozark Trail, the moment I take one step away from the peak height, my head touches the top of the tent, right here. And here's how much I can walk around the entire tent while still standing upright. That's a whole world of difference right here. And if you're taller than me, you're gonna spend your time hunched over in this tent. When it comes to spaciousness, this Ozark Trail instant tent definitely feels more like a dome tent than a cabin tent and I highly recommend that you watch my tests on the screen here if you skipped past them so that you have a better idea of what I'm talking about here. Another huge con is that this tent is really not good in the rain. I'll leave it at that for now but do check out these tests on the screen here for way more info on this. It's also a very floppy tent that is not top at all. The entire wall kind of flops into the tent itself and it will buckle in the wind so this is purely a fair weather tent not for any kind of rain and wind. Oh yeah and the shelf life of this tent is pretty short like maybe a couple of years max because the dark rest fabric will degrade quite a bit and every time you touch the tent your fingers will be a huge sticky icky mess. 
Also, there's only a six month warranty, one of the shortest warranties I've ever seen for any camping tent. I'm not even really all that done with the cons, I actually mentioned quite a few more earlier in the video while I was going through all the different tests, like the setup cons, the pack away cons, door cons, materials, and quality cons. So yeah, I think you can tell I'm not really a big fan of this tent at all. I think there are way more cons than pros for sure and I wouldn't really recommend it unless you're a first time or even a casual camper who just wants to try it out. You love both the dark rest and instant setup of this tent for the price and you camp only in strictly fair weather. No rain, no wind. But if you want to invest in a slightly better tent for the long term, I can recommend way better blackout tents or instant tents. I'll publish these videos when you're ready and leave them on the screen for you to check out so that hopefully you can find something better for yourself. Thank you for watching this review, I hope you found it helpful. You're awesome and I'll see you in the next one.